If you guys were Sonic the Hedgehog fans back in 2014, you would definitely remember the Sonic Boom side franchise. It's something that came as a shock to a lot of people. When that first teaser image released, I think the consensus was... <laughs> I think it's safe to say not everybody was too happy. Don't call anybody. Even with the release of Lost World, Sonic was in a really good place. Lost World wasn't a bad game. You had Sonic Generation, Sonic Colors, two amazing racing games. He was even doing really good on mobile. A lot of people didn't feel like there was a need for a reboot, and I was one of those people. But a lot of Sonic fans were actually very optimistic and were willing to see what was going to come. Sega was promising 2014 would be a Sonic renaissance, the year of Sonic. And on February, 6, plenty of things were announced. A brand new TV show, brand new games, brand new designs for Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, and the announcement that Tomy would be the brand new master toy partner for Sonic. Plenty of Sonic the Hedgehog fans and collectors out there were so excited to see what Tomy would bring to the table after the highly received Jazzwares toy line. It was a fresh start. New franchise, new master toy partner, new toy line. So, what released? Let's take a look. The biggest thing that Tomy did with their time with Sonic the Hedgehog were plushes. They consistently released a lot of high quality plushes, and it was on par if not more than the output of action figures and toys. The first things to release were the Sonic Boom 8 inch plush line. It included Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. These are pretty good plushes, they're very accurate, they're very well stuffed and detailed. A lot of fans liked these significantly more than the Jazzwares releases just because Jazzwares was that bad with plushes. These aren't the great to Sonic plushes in the world. I don't think any master toy partner has really done that. So the plushes are really good, but what else did they come out with? Well, you can't have a real true toy line unless you have actual action figures. And Toby made sure to take care of that. There were multiple different ways to obtain your favorite Sonic Boom characters. The first one I remember getting was this Sonic Boom launcher. It's actually one of the first real Sonic play sets. The launcher was designed to look like a tropical beach setting, with the removable Sonic figure going inside of the wheel. You launch it up and aim it for this Eggman standee. They didn't actually include a real Eggman figure, it's just a piece of plastic with an Eggman cutout, but it's still really cool. It's actually very similar to the Sonic Movie Launcher by Jack Specific that only came out around six years later. But that's not it, Tomy also released two packs of Sonic Boom characters. The first one includes Sonic and Amy with their own Ener Beams. If you guys are wondering about these Ener Beams, don't worry. They were originally a big marketing push for Sega with Sonic Boom, but they eventually fell into obscurity as they had basically no function in either the show or merchandise. And there was also another pack that included Tails and Knuckles. I'm just gonna get it out of the way, these figures are alright. Once again, these are coming off of the Jazzwares line who had a lot of different articulation and they just kind of looked a little better. Sure, these figures look more cohesive because they don't have as many joints, but at the same time, they're just kind of there. Is it a step down? Yes, but I wouldn't say that these figures are bad by any means. Now what about some other characters? Now the only way to obtain a character like Dr. Eggman were through these. These were Sonic Boom launchers. These were more gimmicky toys like the playset, and each character attaches to a different launcher that sends them flying. The line included Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman as you can see. Sonic being in a ball, Knuckles being on a hoverboardish thing, and Eggman being in his Eggmobile. This thing was awesome. Everybody was really excited about this figure, and it probably saw sold more than the other two just because of the Eggmobile. It was pretty cool, but unfortunately this line just lasted for this line. There were no other ripcord racer type things or anything like that. Because later on down the line, you were just able to get Eggman in a two-pack with Metal Sonic. Now, you might notice that I've been saying two-packs a lot, and that was the main way that Tomy was getting their Sonic Boom figures out there. There weren't a bunch of single packs, but there were single packs, only of a few characters though. Those being Sonic, Knuckles, and Styx. Yeah, you can only get Styx in a single pack, probably because there were no other characters to really package her with, and this Styx figure is very rare now. It's the only standard sticks figure. Not just the figure, but release. This is the only release of her. Back in 2014, I have her, but I'm really kicking myself that I did take her out of the box. But hey, that should be made up with these. Instead of looking at the TV show and taking characters from the TV show and turning them into figures, they decided to take the pre-existing toys they already have, look at the TV show, and repaint them to certain things that happened to them in episodes. So having an oily tails, an unlucky knuckles, and a slimy sticks. They all came paired with the Sonic figure, but the knuckles one came with a dirty Sonic figure, so I guess you're getting something new too. 
too. A lot of people weren't the biggest fans of these. They felt that they could just make new characters, but they're fine, I guess. But back to 2014, they also released this playset, Sonic vs. Burnbot. This is pretty cool, even though I don't really think it's that much of a playset, but it's really just more of a Burnbot Sonic 2-pack. And to close out the mainline action figures, there was also the Orbot and Cubot 2-pack. But the final figure released that year wasn't a normal figure, it was the Sonic Boom running sound effects figure. I actually have this guy, and he's still in box. I highly doubt that all of his functions still work, and he'll run you a pretty penny nowadays. But Tomy didn't only release figures. There were more plushes than I mentioned before. They had two talking releases, one standard and one deluxe. The standard one just came with a couple phrases, but the deluxe came with even more phrases, different material, and a chili dog. As I mentioned earlier, Tomy did a lot of plushes, and they're really known for their plushes. I just really like these releases. I'd say the first year of Tomy's run was actually pretty decent. Compared to Jazzware's first year, yeah, it tops it very easily. There were a lot of things they were testing out like most Master Toy Partners do, releasing multiple toy lines at the same time and seeing what sticks. I actually give this year a pretty big thumbs up. A lot of stuff came out at one time and it was pretty fun, but I can't say the same about 2015. I'd say 2015 was one of the darkest years in Sonic's history. Sega went through a giant restructuring, there was no game out that year. It was the first time that happened in its entire history. The only thing we got was a mobile game. So if there was one thing that we needed, it was a decent toy line to come out around that time, but Tommy released some bland stuff. The aforementioned battle damage figures, I guess you can call that, released, and yeah, they're just not that special. And not only that, but they had multiple different Sonic variants. They released a Sonic with sunglasses, a Sonic running, and also more single cards of Sonic, but this time with his teeth showing, an Eggman on a single card, and a Tails on a single card. But we did get some other characters. We got a two-pack of Sonic and Shadow. Yes, Shadow was in Sonic Boom, as I'm sure many of you guys know, even though he's only in one or two episodes. Same with Metal Sonic. He was in there too, although briefly he also got figures, along with a Moto Bug and Crab Meat. But the repackagings didn't stop there. We also got these diorama figure sets, I guess you can call them. They had names to them like a TV title. This set being called Sonic Saves the Day, that included Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman. And the other set being called Sonic to the Rescue, which had Sonic, Knuckles, and Metal Sonic, but this time with the metallic finish. They weren't just figure packs, the main selling point was the fact that they had hero cards. They were basically trading cards with glossy Sonic characters characters on there. In terms of action figures aside from this Sonic vs. Eggman figure pack, nothing else really released along those lines. But there were still other Sonic Boom figures released. There were these vinyl figures of Sonic, Knuckles, and Metal Sonic released, who were much larger and came with different material. Knuckles came on these skis with a goofy looking face. Metal Sonic was pretty much just a standard figure, which is probably why he's my favorite out of the bunch, and Sonic came on this hoverboard. They're nothing too crazy, but they're actually very well made. Too bad that's really it. I would've liked some more characters, they did something a little more extreme, but this year with Plush, they decided to try something new. I present to you the Sonic Boom Big Head Plushes. This was a strange little line that was very hot with the Sonic community back in this time. It included Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Dr. Eggman. These were stylized plushes, obviously you can see that, and I actually really like these things. They're really charming and well made, not to mention they're cute, and they're just something that we haven't really seen before. Aside from those vinyl figures, I'd say these are my favorite things to come out of that year. They just look so cute. That is really all we got that year, which is kind of underwhelming, but 2016 was a very pivotal year for Sonic the Hedgehog because it was his 25th anniversary. So what did we get? Well, let's take a look. The most notable event of 2016 was the fact that they finally branched away from Sonic Boom merchandise. Tomy exclusively made Sonic Boom merchandise, and a lot of fans were wondering when we would get things based off of the main series. And with the 25th anniversary heavily focusing on classic Sonic, we got a brand new classic Sonic toy line. There were a variety of different ways to obtain the figures. First one obviously being single cards of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and also the very first time Tomy took a crack at comic book packs. That's right, following in Jazzware's footsteps, they decided to release two packs of Knuckles and Sonic and Sonic and Tails, both having correlating comic books to be associated with the characters, and the awesome silver packaging. There were even bios on the back of the box, they were just really cool. And also a three pack that had metallic finishes on the characters with gold coins. These figures were by no means as diverse versus Jazzware's 20th anniversary toy line, but it was still a good set. Could they have dived into classic Amy, classic Eggman, classic Metal Sonic, and a bunch of other classic-ish characters? Yeah, but with Tomy most likely knowing about Sonic Mania and the main characters in that, 
I see why they just stuck with these three. But still, there could have been some more characters, but it was fine, because we also got plushes. They released an 8-inch plush set of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman. All had this crushed velvet material and looked really great. And also this larger classic Sonic plush that came in pretty standard plush material that they use on all their other Sonic Boom plushes. These were some of the best Sonic plushes to date. They looked great, and the fact that you could walk into stores like Toys R Us and buy these was pretty cool because of how great they looked. But just because it was 2016 and they were doing other stuff other than Boom, doesn't mean they weren't doing anything Boom. In fact, there were a lot of Sonic Boom releases that year. Tomy really amped it up with the plushes because they released so many things. They released the next wave of 8-inch plushes, which included a brand new Sonic. Now you might be wondering, how is this different from this? Well, a thing that Tomy liked to do was just have a little grin instead. That counts as a different plush. <laughs> a Styx plush, a Metal Sonic plush, a Shadow plush. This was actually a really good wave. In my opinion, they look miles better than the first wave, and I just love the characters that they chose. Yeah, having another Sonic with a grin is a little weird, but I mean, I still bought it, so I can't really be complaining. Not only that, but they continued their big head plushes with a Shadow, an Orbot, and an Amy. Now, both of these waves of plushes would be the final waves of the these toy lines. There would be no more 8 inch plushes for Boom and no more Big Head plushes at all, aside from the slightly larger metallic Sonic Boom Big Head plush. It's a little sad that that was it, but the change of pace compared to the stuff we were getting year prior was good. The classic Sonic stuff definitely filled a hole where some other Sonic Boom merch was missing. It was a good year all around, but since the inception of Tomy running Sonic, there's always been that one statement, where's modern Sonic? People were excited for Boom, but once when it crashed and burned, Nobody really wanted the toys anymore, and as much as people love classic Sonic, he started getting beat into the ground so much, getting shoved down our throats to where people didn't even want to buy him anymore, let alone look at him. They just wanted a return to form, because although there was some cool stuff that I just showed you, it was nothing compared to some of the stuff that Jazzwares was doing. But luckily, they didn't have to wait too long. For 2017, it was revealed that Tomy would finally be doing modern Sonic figures and plushes. The Sonic collecting community rejoiced as we were finally getting modern Sonic figures again. It was so long since that happened. Last time you were really able to go inside of a store and find modern Sonic figures on standard retail shelves like Toys R Us or Target was around 2013 to 14. So what did we get? Well, some pretty cool stuff. The first comic packs to release were of Sonic and Knuckles, each coming with their modern and classic counterparts, and what came with them were Archie comics. Now here's the thing, around this time, Archie was cancelled. In 2017, there were no Archie comics, so of course you're gonna run into issues there. Fortunately, they were in production early enough to be released on time with all of their Archie comics, but there was also Tails and Metal Sonic packs that were announced that unfortunately had to be delayed almost an entire year because of the Archie comics getting cancelled. Overall, the figures looked really good. They were by far the best figures that Tomy ever made with any of the different versions of Sonic. It's just a shame it took so long to get there. But what about the other modern stuff? Well, let's take a look at that. The plushes looked really good. By far the best plushes that Tomy ever put out at the time. Wave 1 included modern Sonic and modern Metal Sonic, and also classic Sonic and classic Tails. Wave 2 included classic Sonic Live laughing, classic Knuckles, modern Shadow, and modern Tails. Unfortunately this time I wasn't doing YouTube as much so I didn't have as much money, so unfortunately my window passed on these guys but I'd still love to have them. We can't forget about the classic figures though, but unfortunately Tomy took the cheap route with these guys. All they did was make two three packs, one being standard Sonic Knuckles and Tails with these rings, and then these obnoxiously hideous versions of them pixelated. Not to mention the other atrocities they made with these ugly translucent figures in the abysmal black and white versions of them. I don't know whose idea it was to make these. The fact that Sega approved of these and the fact that Tomy was like, yeah, these are good to make, just kind of baffles me. They're by far some of my least favorite Sonic products in the entire history of the franchise. The fact that these were made in 2017 just says a lot, which explains why I bought them! But we can't forget about Sonic Boom. With the obvious shift in Tomy's direction with Sonic the Hedgehog, that year was very light in terms of Sonic Boom. 
here are the things we got. They released emoji keychain figures. That's right, keychains of Sonic and Knuckles emoji characters. They're not like horrible, they look like emojis. We did get some normal figures that year. We did get a three pack of Sonic, Shadow, and Eggman in metallic form. And I guess you can say the only new figures we got that year were Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails spacesuit figures. We got a multi pack of Sonic, Amy, Knuckles, Tails, and Eggman, which is cool and it was actually decently priced. But once again, no sticks. I don't know why Tomy just kind of dropped her. And also the Blue Force 1. So yeah, the figures this year were pretty disappointing. Now, I can't get too upset at them because this was the final year of Sonic Boom. It made sense that they started reaching the bottom of the barrel. But what about plushes? Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, they completely dropped the 8 inch wave and the big head plush wave. Instead, they decided to make emoji plushes. Now, granted, these are really cute, but definitely not anything I was gonna buy. And in fact, in a merch hunt, I passed on these guys, and I don't think they sold too well either. Despite the release of modern merchandise, I'm actually very mixed on this year. I really enjoyed the modern figures and plushes, but their classic wave was extremely lacking, only releasing variants. Not like good variants, just cheap variants that don't look good. And aside from the spacesuit figures and the Blue Force 1 maybe, everything else Sonic Boom was not great. Although this year was fine, they definitely could improve, and the next year, they did improve. Tomy unveiled their 2018 Sonic the Hedgehog releases and the internet was ecstatic. There were so many amazing cool different figures and plushes coming out and it was by far their best year to date. One of my favorite things that Tomy did was that they didn't cancel the Tails and Metal Sonic packs, no. They actually released them with their own exclusive comic books. Most of them came out great, not this Tails, he looks really ugly, but it's still so great that they released. All of the Chow fans rejoiced when this was revealed. A three pack of Sonic Knuckles Tails with three different Chows. It's not every day that you see Chow merch so this was a moment for all of us to be excited about. I remember picking this up in a merch hunt and I don't plan on opening this because this was not only a special moment being out with my friends looking for Sonic merch, but it's not every day that we're gonna see something like this. Something that came as a shock to a lot of people was that we were finally getting figures of Zavik and Infinite. This was coming off the release of Sonic Forces, so it's not as weird as it would be getting an Infinite figure now, but it's still a really cool pack as we didn't have figures of any of these guys, and both figures turned out really good. As much as I hate Zavik, that figure looks just like Zavik, and their greatest release that year was the ultimate classic Sonic the Hedgehog figure. This is the closest thing resembling the Nendroid that we got since the Nendroid, and a lot of people, including myself, think it's actually better than the Nendroid. You can swap out hands, faces, it's just so amazing. There are accessories, there's an amazing stand. A lot of us didn't expect Tomy would do something like this, but they did, and it turned out amazing. This wasn't only a good year for figures, it was an even better year for plush. They released two sets that year. The first one being a Sonic variant, Dr. Eggman, Amy, classic Super Sonic, the first one since the Sonic the Fighters plush, Vector, and a Chow. Not only that, but later in the year, there was also that same Sonic variant, Silver, a Tails variant, Knuckles, a Shadow variant, and classic Dr. Eggman. But that wasn't it. Tomy also had larger plush releases, those being Modern Knuckles, Shadow, Modern Supersonic, and Dark Chow. Yes, a Dark Chow plush. I think that this was the peak of Tomy. All of these products released the same year, and they released relatively on time. They looked great, they felt great, they just were great, they were amazing. This is what we were waiting for. Tomy was getting it, but it wasn't just that. Sonic Boom was still having their products released. Yes, even though 27 saw the end of Sonic Boom the television series, the toy line still went on for a little bit. Now, it wasn't as much as you might think. The only things that we ended up getting were a three-pack of green Eggman with Orbot and Cubot metallic versions, and emoji plushes of Angry Shadow, Angry Dr. Eggman, and Happy Sonic. This might sound like very little to a lot of you, and yes, it's because there was supposed to be more. In terms of Sonic Boom, there were only plans for re-releases and repaints. Another repaint of Dr. Eggman, another Sonic repaint along with all of his friends in soccer outfits, but those never came out. And it doesn't stop there. The Collector series was supposed to have much more. What if I told you that we were going to get single releases of Sonic, Knuckles, Modern Super Sonic, Shadow, and two packs of Classic and Modern Amy and Classic and Modern Eggman. Both were supposed to come with metal plated cards of custom art and also a surprise silver release. These didn't release, but 
if they didn't have enough time to work on them, they could just delay them and release them the following year, right? Well, no. I've been avoiding this issue the entire history video, but Tomy was horrible with delays and releases. Every catalog they'd promise a item to come out a specific date, like let's say something was supposed to come out in February or April, and it just ended up coming out in October or November. That happened most of the time. It was frustrating for fans, and I'm guessing it was frustrating for Sega because they didn't choose to continue with Tomy, and I'm guessing it was a mutual agreement as well because Tomy recently has been skewing very, very young. Yes, this was the final year of Tomy. There was no time to release those figures any other time. We will never get those toys from Tomy. We knew something was up when those products just didn't come out. It became evident in February when it was announced that Jack Specific would become the new master toy partner for Sonic the Hedgehog. It sucks because they were coming off their best year yet. They improved a lot, especially with the time that they were given, because Tomy was dealt a bad hand. During 2014 through 2015, they exclusively made Sonic Boom merchandise. And even in 2016, it was still majority Sonic Boom merchandise, even if there was classic stuff. They didn't get to start making the stuff that I'm guessing they wanted to make until the very end of their run. Tomy had the potential to be the greatest Sonic Master toy partner of all time, but unfortunately, Sonic Boom hurt that. Tomy had their ups and their downs. I really enjoy a lot of what Tomy did, but I think it was a smart decision for Tomy and Sega to move on. Sonic has found a new home with Jack Specific. We're currently in our second year with some awesome stuff being promised. But even though we're moving on, I will always look back at Tomy and thank them for what they gave us. They gave us some great toys, I had a lot of great experiences because of Tomy. It wasn't a perfect run, but it was a damn good one. Thanks Tomy. For everything.